So whenever you all are ready, could you talk through what you put together? Uh, we made a heat simulator. Um, start it up. Initialize it. And we can run heat. Oh, wow. So, so on a mouse click, it will inject heat uh, into this grid that we have. And then it will use the generated like values for every single cell, which are all placed into columns to build a bigger grid. Um, and this grid is updated every time step um, with the different colors mapping to different like the pixels. Eventually, it all becomes white because that's that's the stable. Mm. So when you click, that's creating a heat source. You are it's injecting, injecting, injecting heat, heat. Okay. Yeah. And then it's diffusing yes. throughout the grid. Right. It's not a source in the sense it's not persistent. The sure. The value changes like that point. Wow. And can you describe what what aspects of this are being performed on the FPGA and what aspects are being performed on the HPS? The only part that's currently running on the HPS is the cursor and then the words on the side and on the bottom. So okay. the HPS like sees where a click happens and um, sends it to the FPGA and then the FPGA does all the computation and the graphics. plotting as well. Yeah. Yeah. And writes to the VGA screen. Right. Yeah. So we use 110 and 10K to collect the values that we're clicking. Uh, we set it as the heat injection, and those 10K values are then passed to our like data processing like system, okay. which kind of adds it to the grid, and then it like, computes all the values. So yeah, if left long enough, it will just go back to mm -hmm. all white. OK. So we also have another mode that we run it in. Um, so that's in the center a heat source right now. And okay. this right up here on the top left is a heat sink. So the point in the center kind of like brings down everything around it. And here it's a heat source and introduces wow, heat. Wow, yeah. And with this, we can still do like the heat injection. Uh, it's just less visible because the heat source in the middle is very large right now. Sure. So the colors are essentially showing us like the heat contours. Yeah. And are you updating the... Can you describe any sort of parallelism that might be taking place here in the updating of the heat for each grid in this, or each cell in the grid, rather? So we have, um, similar to the drum lab, we have mm -hmm. M10K blocks for each column. So all the computation for each column happens at the same time. So. And what is the algorithm? Uh, algorithm is algorithm it? in Latin. Like, is this an implementation of the heat equation? Yes. The discrete version of it. The discrete version of the heat equation. So it takes into consideration the left, right, up and down values, and then multiplies that by a constant that we have, which is like the alpha times delta t value in the heat equation. Oh, so, so you're implementing the heat equation. Cool. Yeah. Wow. That's fast. And I, I remember that before you implemented all of this on the FPGA, you had a version of this running just on the HPS. Yes. Did you notice a speed increase when you moved this to the FPGA? Actually, yes. Um, in the sense, like we thought that when we were sending multiple points like this, like the, for the click and drag, mm -hmm. we would need to put it in an M10K block and then iterate through all of that. But it's so fast that we are actually just sending one value at a time and it's so in instantaneous. Okay. We also noticed uh, switching over from the C code that um, with introducing a heat source into the middle, we're using all of the same constants and values that we were in the C code, mm -hmm. but it expands a lot faster. So that makes us think that in terms of time, it's doing its updates mm -hmm. more quickly. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because am I correct that are you enforcing any kind of a frame rate here, or is it just updating every grid in the cell as fast as it can manage? It's 
It's just based on the clock cycle. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it is fixed. Yes. That's so interesting. I think we've also added a few extra states because we're reading a lot between M10K blocks and we mm -hmm. want to make sure we're reading the right value. Right. So even with that, it's pretty fast. Mm, it's so fun to just watch it. <laughs> Is this 8-bit color? Yes. Okay. Very, very nice. Yeah. We made our own gradient of colors. <laughs> we kind of just looked at the color map and then we looked at the RGB percentages mm -hmm. and kind of had to eyeball and play around with sure. how much red, how much blue. Sure. Um, and then initially we had the just like we were uh, setting individual pixels but because we did we were constrained by the amount of m10k memory blocks for each column so we only had like 64 like widths worth of like pixels okay to use like columns of the m10k so what we ended up doing was we like took this pixel made it us like a wider like a seven pixel cell and so that's how we were able to make it a lot bigger sure yeah, yeah. Very, very nice. Was it difficult to debug? Did you find it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw it. Okay. <laughs> um, did you, w w was there a particular tool that you found most useful for debugging this? Was it the onboard logic analyzer or the simulation environment or? Would you say that everything sort of contributed equally? I'd say signal, signal tap, tap is what we use the most. Yeah. Um, okay. I think we learned how to use signal tap a lot better, and how to like I guess control like the balance between mm -hmm. like how many signals we're looking at and how much data we want to collect for each, depending on like what type of problem we're trying to solve. Okay. And also changing around the trigger for signal tap based on our state machine, which state we're probably going to have trouble in or sure. think we're having. I think in that point we also use the uh, LED on the FPGA to see which state we're at, which was also helpful. Sure, yeah. Awesome, very, very nice. Thank you all.